Good morning. Welcome to our Sunday morning service. Let's start with number one. My faith has found a resting place. Number one, and then we'll sing our way through the hymn book. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> number one. Thank you. 
prayer Monday to Friday, um, each night in the, in the church at 7 o'clock. And uh, I was thinking for 2021, with 2020, you know, the worst thing about entering a new year is that you have to admit that 2021. Try again. Try again. Try again. Try again. <laughs> still, still no results. You know, 2020, W O N, no, okay, no, no, maybe. Anyway, so the worst thing about the new year is admitting that you lost, I guess, okay? But you didn't lose if you're on the Lord's side, because we're on the victory side. And so going into the week of prayer, I'm, we're going to focus on the sweet smell of victory. And the sweet smell of victory from 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, which says, um, i got to read that verse for you now. Um, it's talking about his triumphing always in every place, and uh, talks about a sweet savor, a sweet smell. And uh, I'll explain what that means. We've already looked at 2 Corinthians recently, not that you might remember. But it says 2 Corinthians 2.14, Now thanks be unto God, which always causeth us to triumph in Christ, and make it manifest the savor of his knowledge by us in every place. And uh, it's kind of the... the the picture of a victory parade. If you go through 2 Corinthians chapter 2, Paul's painting a picture of the Romans' uh, army coming back to Rome, celebrating their victory. And they have a big parade, and everybody marching, the soldiers, and their pagan priests were marching as well, and they burned, they burned incense that would make a, sweet, a savor, a smell as they marched through the streets that was signifying victory. And while Paul's referring to that, as he's saying, we're the ones that everywhere we go, there's a sweet savor of victory uh, in every place as we triumph in Christ. So we'll look at victory uh, this coming week. All right. And then tonight, of course, our service at 7 o'clock. Free service prayer time's not there, but it's at 5.15. And um, uh, I think that's my announcements for this morning. So let's... Uh, Take our hymn books one more time and go to number 818, 818, and uh, we'll sing that song. Uh, the verse was just uh, quoted for testimony time earlier today, and uh, we'll be looking at the verse this morning. Number 818, great is thy faithfulness that stand together in sin.
We'll start our reading in verse number 18. And I said, My strength and my hope is perished from the Lord, remembering mine affliction and my misery, the wormwood and the gall. My soul hath them still in remembrance and is humbled in me. And then it says in verse 21, This I recall to my mind, therefore have I hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. The Lord is my portion, saith my soul, therefore will I hope in him. The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. It is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. Let's ask the Lord to bless his word. Our Father, thank you, Lord, for the passage of Scripture that's before us this morning. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, Lord, that was new this morning. It's new every morning, and we're so thankful, Lord, for your mercies that fail not. And I just ask, Lord, that as we uh, consider these wonderful truths from your word this morning, I pray that you'll fill me with your spirit, Lord, to preach your word. I pray that I'll preach it as you would have it preached, and I pray, Lord, for each one that you'll minister to each heart according to each and every need. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please be seated. In Genesis chapter 8, God gave Noah the promise, While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. That was God's promise to Noah way back in Genesis chapter 8, some 4,000 years ago. And he's kept that promise ever since. Why? Because he is faithful. James tells us at Christmas time, we, uh, we, t- we make sure our kids know that you know, every good gift and every perfect gift is from above. And it cometh down from the Father of lights. And then that verse in James says, with whom is no variableness, neither shadow of turning. God doesn't change. He is faithful. As the text says this morning, great is thy faithfulness. And this morning, I want to think of the faithfulness of God. The book of Lamentations, it's a a very poetic book. You read this book, it's very easy to read. I think a a child could read this book and have no problem making their way through it. It's very easy to read in that sense. But it's also got a very somber tone, a very serious book. Literally, Lamentations means weeping. Uh, It's a book of to lament is to weep, and it's written by a man that we've entitled the weeping prophet, the prophet Jeremiah. And he had much to lament, much to weep about. And yet, I'm so encouraged that here he is in the middle of his lamentations, the middle of his weeping, he takes a moment to reflect on the faithfulness of God. He takes a moment to remember that although, yes, he has much sorrow, much to lament, God has still been faithful. God has still been good. And he gives thanks to God for his faithfulness. And so I'm encouraged by that because, you know, it reminds us of our day. You know, oftentimes we go through difficult times, difficult trials. But even on our hard days, we can remember that God's still faithful, that God's still good, that God has kept his promise. He's kept his word. He's still the same He's still faithful. So this morning from Lamentations, let's consider the fact that he is faithful. Number one, I want you to note the manifestation or the display of his faithfulness. The manifestation of his faithfulness. How did Jeremiah know that God is faithful? I mean, you'd say, I I don't know how he saw that because look at the day he lived in. We say we had it hard in 2020. We, we have it hard different times. And listen, I realize that for 2020, that was for a lot of people the worst year of their lives. I get that. But I also understand that other people have gone through hard times too. And Jeremiah was one that went through very difficult times. And honestly, I wouldn't want to trade places with Jeremiah. Jeremiah saw the city that he lived in, the city that he loved, destroyed. He saw it burnt down with fire. He saw enemy soldiers come in and pillage the city. He saw them lead them away captive. He saw one slain with the sword, slain with famine, also slain with pestilence. 
He saw them slain from all these different things. And there was so much going wrong in his life, so much for him to weep about. And yet, in the middle of it all, he still witnessed God's faithfulness. He still saw that God is faithful. And you say, how? How did he see God's faithfulness? How how in that situation could he understand that God is faithful? Well, it's because that morning, he woke up and the sun was shining. And he knew that God was faithful. It was because that morning they were, they were still there. They were not consumed. It's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassions, they fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. And uh, for the world today and for many Christians, for, for us here, you know, we understand that we've gone through difficult times, gone through trials And uh, yet we wake up this morning and we see that we're in a new year. We're in a new day. The sun is shining. And the Lord is the one who saw us through. The Lord is the one that took us to 2021. The Lord is the one who saw us through to the other side, if you will. The Lord is the one who has brought the sun out this morning to shine. He's shown his faithfulness to us. I wonder if you realize, like Jeremiah did, it's of the Lord's mercies that we're not consumed. People think that they're here today because of what they've done, because of some man, because of what they've been able to accomplish, because of their own talents, their own abilities. Uh, Many feel that they are self-made, that they control their destiny, that they're the captain of their fates. But that's not the case. You realize that no matter who we are, no matter what your talents are, no matter what your position is, your abilities, no matter what, we're all dependent on the faithfulness of God. Every single one of us. Without God, where would we be? Without God, what would we be? Turn to Psalm 124. Psalm 124. Think of what David noticed. In Psalm 124, I believe it was David that wrote it. It is David. Psalm 124, a song of degrees of David. And what does he say? You say, David... He, uh, he was victorious because of David's strength, because of how he worked that, bow, that, that sling and stone. David was victorious because of David's abilities. No. David says in Psalm 124, verse 1, If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Where would you be if it had not been the Lord who was on your side? Where would you be without his faithfulness? Oftentimes, we, we get the idea that we, we focus on the negative as people. We, it's just something that our flesh tends to do. Our flesh likes to think of the worst. Our flesh likes to remind ourselves of everything that went wrong. But yet, you realize that if it weren't for God, it would have been a lot worse. You realize that if it weren't for his faithfulness, you wouldn't have made it through. Can you look back and see how God's hand led you through last year? Can you see how God, by his faithfulness, has seen you through and he's taken care of you? You know, you might look back at 2020 and have complaints about it all, like you could wallow in it, but God saw you through it. And the fact that you're here today in 2021 is a manifestation that he is faithful, that he can be trusted. You know, he he didn't have to bring you through, but he did. He didn't have to allow you to see this new day, but he did. He could have left you long ago, but he didn't. He's been faithful to you, and he's seen you through. And so this morning, let's take some time and thank God for being faithful to us. Thank him for seeing 
us through, the manifestation of his faithfulness. And then I see in our text back in Lamentations chapter 3, I see the motivation of his faithfulness. The motivation of it. You say, why in the world would God be faithful to us? Why would Almighty God consider me? Why would he think about me? Why would he be faithful in taking care of me? Because let's be honest, what do people do? People take care of those who take care of them. People are good to those who are good to them. People are nice to those who are nice to them. And we learned in Sunday school that we need to be that one that's nice to anyone, nice to everyone. But so often we, we only are kind to those who we feel deserve kindness. And the fact is there's nothing in me that warrants God's faithfulness, nothing in me that is worthy of God. As Jacob put it, I'm not worthy of the least of his mercies. Paul said in Romans 7, In me that is in my flesh dwells no good thing. Isaiah 64, 6 and 7 says, But we are all as an unclean thing, and all our righteousnesses are as filthy rags, as we do all fade as a leaf, leaf, and our iniquity like the wind has taken us away. And there is none that calleth upon thy name that stirreth up himself to take hold of thee. We don't deserve his faithfulness. We don't deserve his kindness. But why is it that he's kind to us? It's because of who he is. It's because he is merciful. It's because of his mercy. Do you realize that if we deserved it, it wouldn't be mercy, you know? We think of what we deserve and, and what mercy is. There was a mother whose son was being executed in the days of Napoleon Bonaparte. And the son was going to be sentenced and he was to die in the gallows. And uh, the mother was begging for his life and uh, and Napoleon said, your son has sinned. He, he needs justice. And the mother said, but I, I'm not asking for justice. I'm asking for mercy. But he doesn't deserve mercy, Napoleon said. And the mother said, but if he deserved it, then it wouldn't be called mercy. <laughs> Napoleon was moved by the mother's plea and pardoned the young man. If we deserved it, it wouldn't be mercy. But God is mercy to us. Mercy, by definition, is God withholding from us the penalty that we deserve. Mercy is God withholding from us the wages of our sin, the penalty for our, our wrongs. It's God not giving us what we do deserve. We think of grace and we think of mercy. Grace is when God gives us what we don't deserve. He gives us salvation. He gives us His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He gives us grace. And mercy, on the other hand of it, is God withholding what we do deserve. Withholding judgment. Withholding hell. Withholding eternal damnation. And what is it that allowed Jeremiah to see that day? It was the Lord's mercies. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed because His compassions fail not. When you think of His mercy, I think, number one, how His mercy exceeds. His mercy exceeds. Uh, Jeremiah, he's the weeping prophet. We call him the weeping prophet mainly because of Lamentations, where it's a whole five chapters of weeping, weeping over the, what has happened to the nation of Israel, what has happened to the city of Jerusalem. But Jer Jeremiah was weeping for a lot longer than that. Jeremiah was the prophet that wept his whole ministry. He stood there before kings and he was weeping. He stood there before the kings of Judah, begging of them to go the right way, begging of them to follow the Lord, begging of them to repent of sin and get right with God, telling them of the judgment to come and pleading with them to escape the judgment. Weeping. He was always weeping before them. But he saw time and time again that the message was rejected. Jeremiah, as he preached, he was, one king had him thrown into prison. One king took the book that he had written, the book of Jeremiah, and cut it in pieces with his pen knife and then threw it in the fire. Jeremiah had witnessed full well the sins of, Jer of the nation of Israel. And Jeremiah knew what they deserved. You see, Jeremiah understood that what they had happened to them, they deserved it. The wages of sin is death. 
he understood that they didn't deserve God to protect them from the Babylonians. They didn't deserve God's deliverance. They, they deserved the, the things that had happened to them where the wages of their sin. They, they could have had it differently, but they chose that path when they chose their sin. They didn't, they didn't deserve God's mercy, His deliverance. But Jeremiah notices that although they had, in a sense, gotten what they asked for, he realizes that they still didn't get everything they deserved. It was by God's mercies that they weren't consumed. It was by God's mercies that there was still some there. It was by God's mercies. Their sin was great, but God's mercy was greater. Do you realize that God's mercy is greater than our sins? Oftentimes we, we, we think that uh, we deserve better than we get. No. We're sinners and the wages of sin is death. We don't deserve, as Jacob says, the least of God's mercies. But God is merciful to us just the same. Go to Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 is a good reminder for us of where, what we are, who we are, without the mercies of God. Ephesians 2 verse number 1. And you hath he quickened. Ephesians 2, verse 1. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. Ephesians 2, verse 2. Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. You notice that, that those verses, it's talking to us. It's in fact, it's talking to all of us. It says we all had our conversation. Our, we all were this way, living in time past in the lust of our flesh, desire, and the desire, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. That's what we were. We were disobedient, children of disobedience, walking according to the prince of the power of the air, walking according to the devil, walking in the lust of our flesh. We were the children of wrath. When you think of that, you realize how unworthy you are of the mercies of God, don't you? When you see yourself in Isaiah 2, 1 to 3, you quickly discover what you deserve. You know, everybody wants their rights, don't they? I want what I deserve. I want my rights. I, 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 I want what I've earned. <laughs> well, I, I personally don't. <laughs> I don't want what I've earned. I don't want my rights, what I've deserved. Because if I were to get what I deserved, you know where I'd be this morning? I'd be in that place called hell. That's where I'd be. If I were to get what I deserve, I wouldn't see another day. I wouldn't have seen 2021 come in. I wouldn't be here this morning. I wouldn't enjoy another sunrise. I'd go straight to hell because of the sins that I've committed. But praise God, His mercy is greater than my sin. It says in verse 4, But God who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. Even when we were dead in trespass, dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ, by grace ye are saved, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Think of that. Praise God for his mercy that exceeds our sin. As Jeremiah says back in Lamentations, it's of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions they fail not. His mercies 
exceeds. And then number two here, his mercies encourage. Jeremiah, he was encouraged that morning by the mercies of God. He lived in a dark day. It was darker where Jeremiah was. It, it, it was a dark world where he was living through war, through famine, through imprisonment, through all sorts of trials. But even on a bad day, he still understood the mercies of God. He still had the faithfulness of God. And it's easy for us on a bad day to, to think, you know, can't, can't believe how bad it is. You know, I can't believe that this happened to me. I, I was doing good. I was doing right. And now this happened. I, I can't believe, but I and, you know, have a little bit of a pity party and feel sorry for ourselves and wallow in what's going on. When instead, the fact that God has been merciful to us ought to encourage us. We ought to say, thank you, Lord, that you still were merciful to me. Thank you, Lord, for your kindness this morning. Thank you, Lord, for seeing me through another day, another night. Thank you, Lord, for your mercies. His mercy encourages, his mercy exceeds, and then his mercy endures. It says in verse number, back in our text of Lamentations chapter 3, it says it is of the Lord's mercies, verse 22, that we are not consumed because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Think of that. His mercies are new every morning. They fail not. I know that it's the beginning of the year, so everybody either has a new calendar or they're desperately looking for a new calendar. And uh, you're one of the two. You know, Everybody has a new calendar for 2021. And, uh, we got a, 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 a calendar from an, an, a doctor's office recently, and Ethan has taken that calendar, and he's marked it up. Like it, it came with stickers. Have you ever had a calendar that comes with stickers? And so like he's, I, I had a dentist appointment like in December. The calendar started in December, because I guess they gave it to you in December. Anyways, he's like, he's like oh, well, let me get my sticker out. And he puts the sticker on the day that I have a dentist appointment to, so that we know that that's, it had a tooth sticker. I mean, it was a went for that day. Anyways, and you mark the days and you try to keep track. You've gone through already the whole calendar. Everybody's birthday has a balloon on it. Everybody's, uh, every day that is special has something marked on it. And uh, you look ahead at the calendar. You like to see what's coming up. And the fact is, as last year showed us, if any year is going to show us it, really, we don't know what a day holds, do we? <laughs> We don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. We don't know what's going to happen in the future. We, don't, we can look at the calendar and we can look at any day and do we really have any idea what that day is going to hold? No, we don't. Except there's one thing we know it holds. Every single day comes with God's mercies. Every single day on that calendar, His mercies are new every morning. I don't know what is going to happen. I don't know what that day is going to bring. But it doesn't come without its supply of mercies. You think, man, but I, I needed a lot of mercies today. <laughs> I, I need a lot of mercies. I don't know if there's any left. Now, you can't exhaust tomorrow's mercies today. <laughs> every day they come afresh. Every day they're new. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Every day in January, we'll have a fresh supply of the mercies of God. Every day in February, we'll have a fresh supply of the mercies of God. Every day in March, every day in April, every day in May, June, July, all the way through, we'll have a fresh supply of God's mercies. And His mercy motivates Him to be faithful to us. His mercy never fails, so His faithfulness never fails. He always takes care of you. God is good to us, not because of who we are, but because of who He is. He is merciful. He is faithful. He will see you through. Be not dismayed, whate'er be tied. God will take care of you. Beneath His wings of love abide. God will take care of you. Through every day, over all the way, He will take care of you. God will take care of you. There's the motivation of his faithfulness and the manifestation of his faithfulness. And then one more thing this morning, the meditation of his faithfulness. Thinking about the faithfulness of God. How does it affect our, 
our life? How does it affect our thoughts? Number one, we see that God is my portion. He is all I need. Verse 24, the Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. He is my portion. That means he is all I need. I mean, Jeremiah, he lived in a day where he literally didn't have very much, okay? He went from prison. He did own a portion of land that uh, he bought while he was in prison. Uh, Don't know what that was, how valuable that was when the Babylonians were over control of it. But uh, he, uh, he didn't have much when it came to this world's goods, did he? But he realized he didn't need much. He didn't need everything this world had to offer because he had the Lord. He said, the Lord is my portion, saith my soul. Therefore will I hope in him. Someone has said it's when we realize that God is all we have. That's when we realize that God is all we need. Have you learned that God is all you need this, uh, need yet this, this year in your life? Uh, Bob Jones Sr. was conducting a meeting years ago, and there was an old preacher in the crowd, and his arms were thin, and as broomsticks, they say, he was barely surviving. He wasn't able to preach anymore. His wife had passed away. His children lived far away. And people were giving testimonies of the goodness of God. And he stood there, and he was barely able to pull himself up, and He stood there and he said, Dr. Bob, Dr. Bob, I'm an old man. I can't preach anymore. My wife's gone. Dr. Bob, all I have is Jesus. And he sat back down. And then a few minutes later, though, the old man pulled himself back up one last time. And he waited till his voice that could be heard. And he said, Dr. Bob, Dr. Bob, come to think of it. All I need is Jesus. He's all I need. He's all I need. Jesus is all I need. He is my strength from day to day. Jesus is all I need. The Lord is my portion. Psalm 73, 25 says, My flesh and my heart faileth, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. And Jeremiah says, Because he's my portion, I hope in him. My hope is in God Where is your hope this morning? What are you you looking for? Who are you looking for to meet your needs? Who are you looking at to answer prayer? Who are you looking at to supply what you need in this world? And what you need in the world to come? Who are you looking for? You look to man or you're looking to the Lord? He's all you need. He has what you need. Look to the Lord. Let your hope be in God this morning. God is... My portion, he's all I need, and then God is good, so I'll wait for him. Verse 25, he says, The Lord is good unto them that wait for him, to the soul that seeketh him. As Jeremiah thought on the faithfulness of God and his mercy, he realized that God can be trusted, that God is good to his people, that God's ways are best. And it's like he's standing there and he's saying, You know what? It doesn't matter what other options become available. We often get the idea that, okay, I'll I'll take the first way out. We're in a hard time. I'll I'll take the first solution. And whatever, whoever comes offering something first, offering a a little token of first, I'll take that and go that way and go his way. And Jeremiah is saying, look, it doesn't matter what anybody else says. It doesn't matter if someone else has some worldly wisdom that they want to offer. It doesn't matter what other solutions might come, no matter what. I'm still looking to the Lord. I'm still trusting Him. My confidence is still in Him. I'm not going to put it anywhere else. Christian, have you decided to wait for the Lord? No matter what, that He's the solution for your life. He's the solution that you need. You say, I don't know. I don't know if the Lord's way is best. I don't know if I go God's way, if it's going to work out. I I don't know if I'll make it trusting the Lord. Except hasn't he already proven that he's faithful? He's the one that brought you to 2021. Can't you trust him to see you through? Meditate on his faithfulness. Realize that he's your portion and hope in him. After all, it is good that a man should both hope and quietly wait for the salvation of the Lord. 
He's faithful. He's proven it time and time again. He's faithful. You see it in that you're here today. His mercy makes it so that he is faithful. And since he is faithful, wait for him. Trust in him. Have you learned that he is faithful? I wonder if you know him as your Savior this morning. Do you know Jesus Christ as your Savior? you know that he is faithful to save? It says this is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners of whom I am chief. That's a faithful saying. He says if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If you come to Jesus for salvation, he'll always forgive. He'll always save. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I wonder, you know, we talk about God's faithfulness, and he's faithful because, we said, because of the morning, because we're here today. But the fact is, death comes for us all. The fact is, it's appointed unto man wants to die, and there are some of the Lord's people, many of the Lord's people that have passed away in 2020, and it could be that 2021 is your year or my year. We don't know the day that we're going to die. But does that mean that God isn't faithful? No, even then, he's still faithful. There's a man that was passing away, and, and someone said to him, now you're going to receive the reward of your labors. And he said, no, 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 no. Now I'm going to receive mercy. <laughs> you know, even then, he's merciful. Even then, he's faithful. And we can always count on the faithfulness of God. Are you looking forward to the day when you see the Lord? Are you trusting in him? Have you learned that he is faithful? Let's pray. Our Father, thank you, Lord, for the time we've spent in your word this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the fact that you are faithful. And I pray, Lord, that we'll depend on you and trust in you day by day. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's take our hymn books and go to number 529. Number 529 day by day. And let's stand together and sing.